Hey, what's up? Today, we're going to create this user management system to sharpen or recruit skills. The application will allow you to search. You'll be able to add new customers, update customers, and also delete them. The list of customers will be paginated and everything will be fully responsive thanks to Bootstrap. If this is something that you like to learn, stick around and consider subscribing. Now let's get started. Hey, welcome everybody and let's get started. I've already created a Node.js user management project folder and inside here is where we're going to be initializing a new project. In order to do this, open the terminal or PowerShell. On Windows, you can do left shift, right click and open terminal in here and this cds to the project folder that i've created but of course you can use the cd command if you're on linux or mac now let's open this full screen and let's initialize a new project by doing npm init dash y and this is going to skip all the questions and save us a couple of seconds i'm going to clear everything and the next thing that we need to do is install the dependencies that we need for this project npm i for install and then we can start listing them starting with .tmv EJS Express, Express EJS Layout, Express Flash Messages, Express Session, Method Override, and Mongoose. Press Enter, and this should take a couple of seconds. And the next dependency that we need to install is going to be a development dependency and that's nodemon nodemon is going to restart the server for us every time we make a change so we don't have to do it manually in order to install nodemon we need to do npm i for install and then dash dash save dash dev and we do nodemon all right now let's open our project in visual studio code or whatever code editor you have available so code dot and this is going to open visual studio code with my project here on the side inside the explorer if you can't do this you can simply go to file open folder and just open your project folder if you open the package.json file in here you will see that we have the name version description script we have the dependencies and the development dependencies first of all inside scripts we need to create a new script called start so i'm going to do comma and then inside here we do start and we all we need to do in here is we want to tell nodemon to start our application so nodemon and then the application name which i'm going to call app.js save this the next thing that we need to look at is the dependencies as of currently i'm using those versions but in future some of them are most likely to change they're very popular dependencies so if you have any errors just google them and hopefully you'll find the answer and the last one is obviously nodemon which we installed and we're using here let's create our application file which is called app.js so inside the explorer we can go app.js like so once you create your new file we also want one more which is going to be called .env and this env file is going to contain some of the stuff that we want to hide such as the username of our database the password of our database and the string of our database which we're going to do a little bit later in this tutorial now let's create a very basic application so open app.js and let's focus on that to start let's add the dependencies that we're only going to use right now and we're going to be adding the rest as we progress in the tutorial the first one is going to be our env that we just created so this is the only one that is required a little bit differently so require and then in single quotes we do dot env and then we do dot config and like so the next one is going to be express so we do const express equals require and then we require express in single quotes like so we also want express ejs layout which is going to help us to create layouts that can be reused for the entire application and i'm going to be using ejs which is going to save us a lot of time inside here we're going to do const express layout and then this is going to be equals require and then we are requiring express ejs layout like so now we need to create a new express application and in order to do this we can do const app equals express and we start the function if you hover over this you will see that it should say create an express application the express function is a top level function exported by the express 
module which we have here. We also need to tell application what port number to be using. So, so we do const port and this is going to be equals 5000. If we're working locally, this is going to be the port number that we're using. But if we decide to upload this application on a real server, so it's publicly visible, we can do all and then we can use the environment port number set by the server as default. And this is going to be process dot env port like so the next thing that i'm going to do is finish up with express and i'm going to do app.use and because we're going to be having forms in our application which is going to allow us to pass data then we need to do a couple of things so the first one is going to be express and then inside here we're going to do euro encoded and for this this is going to be in curly brackets extended and then we set this to true like so close and if you hover over this you will see that this returns middleware that only passes your encoded bodies and only looks at requests where content type header matches the type option. The next thing that I want to do is app.use and then this is going to be express.json like so. And then if I hover this, if I hover over this, you'll see that returns middleware that only passes JSON and looks at requests where content type header matches the type option. So those two things are going to be helping with passing data through the forms later on but i wanted to set them up now and the next thing that i want to set up is the express static folder and what we need to do is app.use express.static and then inside here we're going to do all static folder which is going to be called public now what this is is essentially i'm going to be creating a public folder which is going to hold all css images and javascript if you hover over this you will see that this is a built-in middleware function in express that serves static files and is based on server static so this is going to make us serving images css javascript so much easier later on and i'm going to show you how it works the next thing that we need to do is set up our templating engine and then to do this we can do app.use and then express layout and then we're going to do app.set and then we need to set our default layout is dot slash and then we're going to create layouts folder and then main so this is going to be our main layout so essentially we create one layout that can be reused for many pages and we're going to be including scripts css images and so on now the last thing that we need to do in here is app.set and we need to set our view engine view engine like so and then the view engine that i'm going to be using is ejs in this example and i'm going to show you a very cool extension that's going to help us a lot all right we are almost there the next thing that I'm going to do is create a very basic route and this route is going to be our homepage, for example, just so we can test the application. To do this, we can do app.get and inside here, we can just do slash, which is going to be our homepage. And then we're going to do a function, which is going to be a request and response like so. And then this is going to be a narrow function and inside curly bracket is where we're going to do the logic. And this is going to be res dot send and then we can send some data like hello world like so but we also need to tell express to listen on this port number and start the application app dot listen grab the port number from here so port and then this is going to be an arrow function like so and then in curly bracket we can finish by doing console dot log and then i'm going to do in single slanted quotes like so which is going to allow us to uh, bring in cons and inside here i'm going to do app listening on port and then with dollar sign curly brackets we can put the port number inside here and that's it all right at this point we should be able to start the application and get the hello world message so if you save this you can either go here on the three dots and run and click on terminal new terminal and you can do the, your commands in here or you can do the commands on the outside PowerShell terminal, as long as you are inside this folder, you should be able to start your application by doing npm, start, press enter, and now this should start your application. And as you can see, nodemon starting node app.js, and we have app listening on port 5000. If you go to the browser now, and if you go to localhost of the port with column port 5000, you should be able to see hello world, which means our application is working. Now, the next thing that we can do is set up or layout. Let's go back to the Explorer here and start creating some folders. So the first one is going to be called views. This folder is going to contain all of 
all pages kind of like all HTML, but in this case, it's gonna be EJS. Inside views, we're gonna have all main layout as well. So let's create that by doing layout. And then inside layout, I'm gonna create a file called main.ejs. So this is going to be all main layout, and I'm gonna show you how it works right now. And what we can do is if you start typing HTML, in Visual Studio Code, we have some suggestions here. And I'm going to click on HTML5, and this is going to create a very basic document. The next thing that we need to do is make sure that all of our pages are using this layout and the content is rendered inside here. And if you go to extensions here, and if you look for this one here called EJS Language Support by Digital Brainsteam, this is going to save us a lot of time writing EJS, and I'm going to show you how now. So I've already got it installed. I'm going to close it. And let's close this as well, like so. And now what I can do is I can start writing EJS super quickly by doing EJS, and then it gives me a lot of options. Now for this option, I actually want the EJS escape. So output escape, and I'm gonna press enter. As you can see, this opens the EJS and closes it for me. And I can do all sorts of cool stuff, which we'll do later. So inside here, I want to be able to render the pages that we're gonna be creating. What we can do is just put body like so, and we're done. This is our main layout. We will modify in a second, but let's test it first of all. So let's go to the Explorer. Let's go to views and let's create our first page, which is going to be called index.ejs. So this is going to be our dashboard or in this case, our homepage. So what I'm going to do is put h1 dashboard. Like so. So what are we expecting to happen is that we want the index.ejs h1 to be rendered inside here and we'll have a look at how this works. But at the moment, if we go back to our app.js file in here and we're sending hello world, we actually want to render this index.js page here. So what we can do instead of res.send, we can do res.render. And then we can tell it which page do we want to render. And in this case, it's going to be called index. Like so, we don't have to specify .ejs. It's smart enough to do this and we should be good to go. If we save this, save everything so far that we've done. And let's go back to the browser and refresh. Now, as you can see, this changed. We're getting dashboard. And also, if I do right click and view page source, you will see that we're getting the HTML here. And inside the HTML, we're getting the dashboard rendered, which is exactly what we want. And this is basically going to be reusable layout. Now you can create many layouts for different pages and tell each page which layout to use, but this is gonna be the default one, which we're gonna be using for this tutorial. Let's close this. And the next thing that I wanted to show you super quickly is that we are only rendering the page, but if you wish to pass some data, like a title and description, we can do that. Later on, we'll move the routes to another, but just to show you inside here, we can create a const and this const can be called locals. And this is gonna be equals in curly brackets, we're gonna have title, and then the title can be Node.js. And I'm gonna do comma, and then let's do description description and inside here let's do free free node.js user management system like so save this and now if you want to pass this data we can do comma outside this and then we can do in curly brackets we can do if you have a few things that we want to pass then we can do them in curly brackets and then we can say locals and then you can list a few more with comma, but if we're passing just one, we don't have to put them in curly brackets and we can just do this and that will work. Now you might be wondering, well, how is this going to affect our page? If you go back to the main.ejs, which is our main layout, inside here, inside the title, now we can actually grab that data. And to do this, I'm gonna remove the document and I'm gonna start writing ejs. And then I'm gonna do at the bottom here, EJS output value and inside here I can just do locals.title. So this is gonna go 
inside locals and grab the title and i can do exactly the same thing with the description the html description is a little bit different so it's meta name equals description and then we have the content usually and the content we can write with ejs put the ejs out and inside here we can do locals dot description and also we need to close this save this and make sure that you save app.js as well and now if you go back to the website currently you see that we have document here and if i refresh you'll see that we're getting node.js which is the title that we're passing and also if i do right click and view page source you'll see that we're getting the title in here and we're getting the content which we passed from here so that's a good one to know of course you can render this pretty much anywhere you like so I can grab this if I wish to and paste it in an H1 here, save it. And if I go refresh, here it is, render it, here we go, just like so. We don't want this, I'm gonna remove it. Now the next sensible thing to do would be to set up or layout. Obviously we have a very basic layout so far, but what I'm gonna be using today is Bootstrap to make our website look presentable and it's just gonna save us a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is go back to the browser, go to getbootstrap.com and as of currently we are using version 5.3 and, and we need to go here to read document, click on this, scroll down a little bit and as you can see they're giving you a little demo, a few instructions. What we need to do from here is grab the link, the CSS link, so I'm going to copy this and paste this into our main layout, maybe underneath the meta description here, I'm going to paste it, view will wrap so you can see a little bit better and also i want to grab the javascript just in case later on we'll probably end up doing some pop-ups and you might want to experiment with stuff so grab the javascript and let's paste it here above the ending body tag like so save this save this let's go back to bootstrap one more time and let's look into bootstrap icons search for bootstrap icons and then if you click on this learn more about bootstrap icons link this will lead you to icons.getbootstrap.com and in order to install this click on install and here it is the cdn i'm going to grab this one here as it's the easiest way to do and then i'm going to paste the bootstrap icons inside here all websites should be using bootstrap now and if i go back to the website super quickly and if i refresh you will see that the font changed to the bootstrap default one now i also want to set up a custom css right now as it makes sense as we are doing all this so what i'm going to do is the styles here i'm going to create a custom one so this is going to be link css and this link css let's call it main.css and this is going to live in our css folder that we're going to create right now and as i said earlier if you go to app.js we set up a public folder for static files. So let's create this public folder. So inside the Explorer, new folder, public, and this folder is gonna be storing all CSS, images, and JavaScript. So inside here, let's do CSS, and let's create our file, so main.css, and also let's create one more for images, ing for short, and we're good. Now, if you open the main.css file, let's super quickly test to see whether this is working by doing body and let's change the background color of to aqua. Save this, make sure that you have this saved as well. And let's go back to the browser and refresh. As you can see, all CSS is working, so we can continue with our project. Let's go back, let's remove this because we definitely don't want it. And now we can start building our layout. Now for this layout, I did use some inspiration from the examples here. So if you go to the getbootstrapwebsite.com and then you'll be able to see a lot of snippets that you can copy and paste now and they will just work. But the one that I used heavily is this one here, which is called dashboard. I'm actually not going to copy everything from here because I've heavily modified it but what I'm going to do is potentially I will create a little file for you that you can copy and paste because it will contain some CSS that I'm going to show you now. So make sure you pause the video, copy the CSS and 
then we can continue. So what I'm going to do now is go back to our CSS to our custom CSS and paste the CSS that we need. Now this CSS is only going to adjust a few colors and fonts. It's not going to do anything too drastic, but it will make the layout look a little bit better than if we don't have it. So I'll definitely have this linked in the description below so you don't have to type it. It's just, as I said, it's just changing fonts and so on. That's the first thing that we need to do. And now we can close it. Now let's start building some of the parts for websites starting with our header. Now, instead of, we could potentially write uh, the header here, the sidebar and so on, but we can also stay organized by creating different partials. If you go back to the views here, and then if we create a new folder and we can call this one partials, these are going to be partial files such as header, footer, sidebar, and so on. So let's start by creating our header dot ejs and let's create one more which is going to be our sidebar dot ejs so inside header let's just put something like header for now and for the sidebar let's just put sidebar so what we need to do now is go back to our main ejs layout here and let's include them in order to do this we can start typing ejs and then if you scroll down here we have include so if I type this, this is going to write the include function and then we can tell it what to include. And in this case, we need to go dot dot and then slash partials and then slash header and then dot e, ejs like so. Save this. Let's go back to our website, refresh. And as you can see that we're getting the header in here, which is great. And now we need to do exactly the same thing with the sidebar. For the sidebar, for the sidebar, we can include it here for now. So I'm going to do sidebar and save. If we go back, here we go. We have header and sidebar, and now we can start constructing our page. First of all, if you're familiar with Bootstrap, I'm going to be using a fluid container, which is going to make everything full width. And then inside it, we can do rows and so on. So what I'm going to do is dot container fluid, and this is going to create a div with a class of container fluid and with this div i want to wrap pretty much all the content including the sidebar and the body so all the content is going to be living in this container so i'm going to do a space and also i'm going to do a row so div with a class name of row like so and close it and wrap everything as well save and now for the body here and i'm going to wrap this in another div in fact this is going to be just called main which is html5 element and i'm going to wrap the body like so and this is going to have a couple of classes so we're going to have a col dash medium dash nine ms for margin start and this is going to be small to alter we're going to have this as column dash large dash 10 and then padding to the x-axis we're going to have our medium screens to be four like so and that's pretty much or main layout then let's go back and refresh as you can see nothing interesting is happening just yet we do have our content here pushed to the side but we'll fix this in a second so now let's start building our header if you go back to the explorer and click on partials header let's close everything else and now we can focus on the header all right so i'm actually going to give you all the html for this so you can pause the video copy and paste it so let's copy and paste it and i'm going to explain it this is a very simple header that you can copy and paste from the bootstrap website essentially we're creating a heading here with the class nav of navbar navbar dark we are making the header sticky with the with a dark background and on medium screens we are doing no wrap with flex padding of zero and we're giving it a shadow then we have a link which is just a navbar brand this link is containing our logo and the logo is going to our home page always so if you click on the logo it's just going to go to the home page that's pretty much it then we have a toggle button for our mobile navigation so when you go on mobile this is going to toggle the hamburger menu and the last thing that we have inside here is our search form which has an input and that's pretty much it we don't have a button because this is going to work on enter so if i was to save this and go back to the project and refresh you will see how simple this is it's just a nav bar with the logo and a search bar now let's save this and go back close it and now let's have a look at the sidebar open it first of all 
and we need to replace this. So I'm going to copy a very basic sidebar that I copied again from Bootstrap and modify it a little bit. I will give you the file so you can copy this and save us a little bit of time. But essentially, this is a navigation with the ID of sidebar. And on medium screens, we have the column set to three. On large screens, we have the column set to two. On medium screens, we have a displayed as block and we have the background as light. And this is also going to be collapsible because on mobile, it's going to pop out with our hamburger menu. And essentially inside here, we have two lists is where you can list your pages, your navigation. And inside here, we have links. This is going to be going to slash, which is going to be homepage. And then if we do create an about page, we can just put slash about. I have a nice icon from bootstrap icons and just about save this and let's go back to the project and refresh. All right. Now we can close bootstrap super quickly and we can focus on our route. If we go back to the app.js file in here, the first thing that I'm going to do is scroll down to a home route. And we are in fact going to be changing this and moving it to its own folder just so we are a little bit more organized. I'm going to comment this by doing control and slash, and this is going to comment it out. If we get a 404 error, so if you go to any page that does not exist, we can do a 404, handle 404. And inside here, we're going to do app.get. And then inside here, we can do an asterisk like so. And then this is going to be a request, response, a narrow function like so. And then inside here, there are a couple of ways we can do this. We can just render some text if you wish, or we can even create a page super quickly. What I'm going to do is res.status. And then this is going to be 404 and then we can render a 404 page. So dot render like so. And the page that we want to render, we can just call 404 and we need to create it. So if we go back to the Explorer inside or views is where we can create our 404 page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very lazy and just create a new page and just do 404.ejs and let's do an H1 404 save. That's going to be your 404 page. Of course, you can design it and make it nice. And now if I go to the website, you should be able to see 404. And this is because we don't actually have any routes. Uh, I can demonstrate this by going to app.js. I'm going to comment this. So our homepage is going to be working now. Like so. We have the dashboard. But if I go to a non-existing page about you can see that we're getting 404, which is great. Let's go back. And now we can create all routes. All routes are going to be living in a folder called server. Let's create this folder called server. And inside server is where we can create another folder called routes. The routes, maybe we can call for this project customer. Customer.js. And this is because you could potentially have uh, multiple routes. For example, login routes, uh, user routes, dashboard routes, whatever. You will see how this works in a second. But we do need to, let me close everything so we don't get confused. But inside the app.js, we do need to tell where our routes are. So instead of doing the home route inside here, what I'm going to do is grab this. In fact, I'm going to copy it for a sec and then modify it in a second. And what we need to do is put our routes in here. And then I can do app.use slash and then inside here we can do require. And then we can do the route, which is going to be dot server slash route slash customer. And we don't have to specify dot JS in here. It's smart enough to do this. Let me tidy this up and we should be good to go. Now, if we go back to customer.js, there are definitely a couple of things that we need to do in order to make this work. First of all, we need to import express just like we did in app.js. So I'm going to do const express equals require. And then we require express like so. And then we do need to include the express router in order to make this work. So const router equals express dot router like so. And now a very important thing that you need to do is export this router. This is important one that you could potentially forget. So I'm saying it now. So what you need to do is module dot export, and then we export the router. Now this should work. So essentially inside here, 
we can list or route. Let me put a comment, customer routes or app routes, whatever you wish to call it. And let's start by building our first one. And let's have a look at how this is going to work. So this is going to be very similar to what we've done here, but instead we're going to be making controllers. So inside here, I'm going to do router dot get. So we are getting a page. So when we go on the route, we're getting, we're not posting anything. We'll do multiple ones later on just to show you how it works. And then we're getting the home page in this case. And then we can create a custom controller for this. Let's say we call it a customer controller. And then inside this customer controller, we can call it dashboard or home page, whatever. Let's say home page. Now we don't actually have this customer controller just yet and we need to create it. So if we go to the server, we need to create a new folder called controllers. Inside here, we control the route and inside here, we control some of the logic and the controller in this case, we can do customer controller. Dot JS, just like we've done it inside here. And now we need to include this customer controller inside our route so we can make it work and in order to do this we can do const customer controller because we're using it here and then require and then we require the file that we just created so this is going to be dot dot slash controllers slash customer controller like so and you can create multiple controllers if your application is a little bit bigger than this so now that we have our home page right in here we actually need to create this home page function. So if we go to the customer controller, we can create it in here. So what I'm going to do is copy this comment. And I'm going to say this is going to be a get route and this is going to be our home page. And I know I pasted this, but this is not going to work. We actually need to have an export called home page now. So what I'm going to do, grab this super quickly and let's build it from scratch. So exports and then inside here we can do dot homepage equals an asynchronous function because we're going to be doing some database stuff in a second. So request, response, and then this is going to be a narrow function. And then inside here we can do some of the logic. So I'm going to remove this. It's This is pretty much the same as this. And let's see what we need. So to start with, we can actually deal with this. I think this is going to be absolutely fine. So we have our title and description and we have, and we also render in the uh, index view page here. Okay. We have everything connected. This is connected, save, 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 save everything. And let's test super quickly. So if you refresh, we're getting a 404 because we're under about. So I'm going to go to the homepage. And still we're getting the dashboard, which is great. Our routes and controllers are working, which is awesome. Okay, so now that we have our foundation created, we can create our database and include it to our project. So today we're going to be using MongoDB. Navigate to mongodb.com. And if you're new to this, go to try free. And then inside here, you can sign up by using the form on the right side. I've zoomed in quite a lot so you can see. But all you need to do is put your first name, last name, company, email, password, and agree to their terms and conditions. Or you can just use single sign in with Google if you wish to. I've already got an account. So what I'm going to do is go back and just sign in super quickly. All right. So I've logged in and your dashboard might look something similar to this. If you're new to this, you'll probably just get an empty page here telling you to, to create your first cluster database. But because I've already got a few, it's actually showing me cluster zero. So hopefully I'll be able to create a new one for this project for free. So let's have a look. The first thing that we need to do is go here and create a new project. Let's give it a name. So I'm going to call my Node.js user management system tutorial next. Then we're going to select our project owner. So this is me. Great project. And now this is going to say that the current IP is not added. 
and you will not be able to connect to the database from this address. We definitely need to add this. So I'm going to click add current IP. And this is going to add my current IP. And now I'll be able to access the database. That's an important one. And if you didn't get this, you can always go to network access and re-add your IP from here. Now let's build our database. Click on build a database. And inside here, we have a couple of options. Today, I'm going to be using the M0, which is a free database storage of 512 megabytes. It's absolutely fine for testing and messing around. And now if you click on this, select the provider that you wish to choose. I'm going to be using AWS in this case. And for the region, I'm going to go with the closest one to me, which is Ireland, I believe. So I'm going to go with that. And then you can give your cluster a name. I'm going to call mine cluster zero, which is the default value. Create. Now this is going to ask us to create a username and password, which is going to allow us to have read and write access to the database. So for the username, I'm going to call mine ready. And for the password, I'm going to auto generate a secure password and I'm going to copy this. So make sure that you copy the password and you can actually paste it inside the .env file for a second. So this is the password and my username is ruddy. I already know it. So I'm going to go back and just create the user. All right, we have the user created and now we scroll down a little bit more. We have the IP added and all cluster has finished provisioning, which is great. The last thing that we need to do is click finish and close. And this is going to say congratulations on setting up rules. I'm going to hide the quick start and then go to databases. Right now that we have our database in here, what we need to do is click on connect, click connect, and then go here at the bottom where it says connect using VS code. Click on this and this will give you a string, connect your MongoDB deployment. So we need to copy this string and paste this string into our environment here. So we actually need to give it a name. And for this, I'm going to give it a name of MongoDB with capital letters, underscore URI, and then equals the string that we just copied and pasted. So as you can see, we have the username in here, which is already set from MongoDB but we do need to replace the password. So for the password, I'm going to grab it from here, remove my username and paste the password inside here. And then the rest is going to be the cluster that we just created. And also this is going to be the, I believe this is going to be the database name. So you can call this whatever you like. I'm going to leave it as test and I'll show you how it works later on. Save this, save your .env file, go back to the database, and close. If you go to browse collection, we won't have anything created yet because we haven't inserted any data, but we'll get to that. So now we should be able to connect to our database through application and start reading and writing to the database. Now let's set this up. First of all, inside the server folder is where we're going to be creating a new folder calling config. Inside this config is where I'm going to create a new file called db, database for short, and then .js. And inside here is where we're going to be making our connection. So const mongoose equals require, and then we require mongoose, like so. Save. Now we need to do mongoose.set, and then inside here we do strict query like so and we set this to false. This will essentially avoid strict mode for query filters. Now we need to make a connection to our database. And in order to do this, we can do const connect database. And then this is going to be an asynchronous function. So async like so, and this is going to be an arrow function. And inside this arrow function, we can do a try catch statement. And inside the try, we can do const con equals await and we're doing mongoose dot connect and then and then we're going to bring the connection string from our environment file here so we're going to do process 
app.env and then mongo db underscore go uri and this is exactly the same name that we have in here so in fact you can copy and paste it and then close this now let's console log when we every time we connect to the database let's uh, console log this so we can do console log and inside the single slanted quotes we can do database connected and then we can do the connection string so dollar sign curly brackets and then con and then this is going to be connection dot host so essentially when we connect to the database this is going to have an object that contains a connection and then host that doesn't look good that doesn't look good and it's because I, cl I didn't close it and now and the last thing that i'm going to do is catch the error so let's do console.log and then we do error perfect so this connection db hasn't been used anywhere and we need to do that so in order to be able to use this in the application we need to export it so we can do module dot export equals and then we export the connection db here like so now we should be able to include this in our app.js file and use it so let's save this close it close everything make sure that you save the connection string in here close it and like that now if you go up here at the app.js file and underneath maybe ejs layout we can do a const and we can do connect db and this is going to be equals require the file that we just created which is under dot server slash config slash database and now we should be able to run this and i'm going to run it somewhere after here so i'm going to do connect db and just run the function connect to database save this save everything that we've done and now if you save the nodemon would have restarted the application and you should be able to see database connected and the string that is connected to the mongodb string which means that we are actually connected and we can start reading and writing documents so what i'm going to show you super quickly is that if i made an error inside the db let's say the connection string was wrong in fact let's go to env and let's say the password was wrong i'm going to put one here and save it so if i go back you'll probably see um i think that when i save the env file the actual application doesn't restart but if i uh, save something else let's say i make some space and save here you will see that the application just restarted and now we're getting mongo server error bat auth which means bat authentication in fact it says here authentication failed so if you get this it's probably because you didn't put the right username and password or shrink i guess so let's put that back obviously remove that and close it and let's restart the application so we get the database connected here which is great if you go back to application as well you can refresh it and it should work as it should all right so in our dashboard is where we're going to be listing all the customers but to make it easier what i'm going to do is i'm going to start by creating some stars in here and a button so we can actually first of all add some customers we're going to do the form and then when we add some customers we'll be able to display them in here so let's do that super quickly and if we go back to the views and then index.ejs i'm gonna do some super quick styling inside here for our dashboard so i'm gonna create a div with the classes so it's gonna be a long one so this is gonna be display flex dot justify content between which is going to push stuff on the left side and the right side you will see in a second then we're going to have flex wrap flex medium no wrap align item center padding top of three padding bottom of two margin bottom of three and border bottom 
right this is a long one i know let's go to view world wrap just in case and then i'm going to do an h1 dashboard this h1 is going to have a class name of h2 just so it's a little bit smaller than h1 and now i want to create a button that is going to allow us to go to the page where we can create a new user new customer in this case so what i'm going to do is create a div with the class of btn dash toolbar margin bottom of two margin bottom of two margin bottom medium to be zero press enter and inside this div i'm going to create another div btn dot dash group dot margin end of two and inside here we're going to do a link so a href and this link is going to go to the add page just to keep it simple and the class name for this link is going to be is going to be button because i want it to look like a button btn small and then and then to make it small i can do btn sm i want this button to be outline so btn outline and then we can use the secondary cut Close this, close the link here, and just put plus new user or customer. And that should be good to go. So if you tie this up, save it, let's go back and refresh. As you can see, this is looking pretty nice. And now we have the new user button here, which maybe needs to be a different color instead of gray, but that's fine. Now let's create this page and then do the form. So what are we going to do? Go back to the server, route and then customer inside here we're going to create another get request which means that we want to render render the add page where we're going to be adding a customer so to do this it's going to be exactly the same we can do alt shift and down and this is going to copy this line here and instead we're just going to call it add for adding customers so customer controller we can call this something like maybe add customer add customer like so and we should be good to go now we actually need to create this inside our customer controller so if you go to controllers customer controller and somewhere below this i can grab the comment let's put it right here we can do get and then this is going to be new new customer form and now we can do exactly the same thing as here so i'm going to copy this paste it and we're going to say export dot add customer. Of course, this needs to match the one here. So add customer, make sure you copy and paste it if you wish. And then we have an asynchronous function with the request and the response. Inside here, we can change the title if you wish. Add new customer node.js. And then you can change the description if you wish i'm going to leave it as it is so in this case we're still rendering the index page which is not what we want we actually want to create a custom customer page and in order to be a little bit more organized this could stay the home page here but we can also create another folder for all of our customer pages if you wish to so inside here we can do customer and maybe we can add all of the customer pages inside there I know that the home page is here but uh, if you wish to you can move it but it makes sense that the home page is here anyway and now we need to create our add page so inside here i'm going to put add and then inside the customer i'm going to create a new page called add ejs like so so this is going to be our customer page and let's just put something like h1 customer let's save this make sure that you save the controller and this is going to the add page and in fact this is wrong we need to go to customer now because it's inside this folder sorry and then add so now if we save this make sure that you have this get route add as well that goes to the add customer controller we should be good to go if we save this and refresh everything is looking good and if i click on add user which goes to the slash add page you will see that we're getting customer so our customer page is now working and in fact this doesn't look very good so what i'm going to do is let me go to the index.js page and let's copy this to speed up the process so this is going to be our header and i'm going to go to the and i'm going to go to the add page here and paste it so instead of dashboard let's say customer 
And instead of having a link, maybe you can just do a button. So I need to open the button, close it, remove the link. And my idea was just maybe you can just do some I don't know, information and stuff. So let's put a question mark. That's not going to do much to be fair. Let's go back, refresh, and that's looking a little bit better. Maybe you can just do something like about this page, I don't know, uh, giving some information or, or just remove it. Right now, let's start building this page. So underneath or customer header here, if we can call it that, I'm going to do a breadcrumb. So I'm going to start with adding a column and padding and then padding to the Y axis to be free. Inside this, I'm going to create a row. So that row and then inside this row, I'm going to create a column. So inside this column, I'm going to be creating a breadcrumb. So what I'm going to do is nav and then inside this nav in fact this is going to have area label equals breadcrumb and inside here we can create an ordered list or l like so and this ordered list we can have a class name of breadcrumb dash item like so and inside here we're going to have a list now and this list is going to have a class name of breadcrumb dash item and then the first one, the first item is going to be a link to our homepage. So we do slash and then inside here, we'll put dashboard. Like so save it. We need one more. So put shift down and this is going to duplicate. And instead of breadcrumb item, we need to add one more active. So this is the active link, which uh, we are on right now. And this is going to be new customer like so. And in fact, we don't need the link here. Sorry. So let's remove the link because this is not going to be clickable and save. Now, the reason I created a row and a column is because I wanted to have two of them. So inside here, we're going to do another call. This time, this call is going to have text dash end and then font weight to be lighter. And inside here, I'm going to do something like B, bold and user ID. And let's save this. In fact, this is not going to be relevant to this page, but it's going to be, but it's going to save us a lot of time for the next page that we're going to do. So let's tidy this up super quickly. And save. If you go back to the page, refresh, you will see that, all right, and that needs to be, we need to remove the dash from here. And also that oil of class breadcrumb item needs to be, we need to remove the item. Save this. And now we go back, refresh. You'll see that we're getting the dashboard link going back to the dashboard and the new customer. So if I click on that, we're going back to the dashboard. And if we click on new user, we're going back to the new user. Perfect. Now let's start building our first forms so we can insert some data. In order to do this, let's tidy things up and move after this. So this is where we're going to be creating our form. In fact, let me close everything for now and save. So we're going to be creating a totally normal form that is going to post data and save it to the database. Let's start by writing a normal form like so. And the action, which is very important, is going to be slash add. So we want to post data and I'm going to show you how we can deal with that in a second. And then inside here, we're going to put the method of post. So we're posting data. We're going to have to create a few inputs. But once we've created two, it's going to get easier. So let's start with creating a div with a class of row and then form group dot margin bottom of four, two columns. So call one. And then inside the first column, I'm going to have a label. So this label is going to be for the first name. And I'm just going to say first name like so. And then after the label, I'm going to create an input. And this input is going to be the type of text. And then it's going to have the class name of form control. The ID is going to be first name. The name, which is very important. This is what going to get all data across. So we're going to put that as first name as well to make it easier. The value is going to be empty, but I'm going to put a placeholder of first name. Just in case. And also we can do some validation with the browser without doing any JavaScript and we can just put required like so. 
One thing about Bootstrap is that you can actually do a lot of validations with JavaScript and Bootstrap, but to save time, I'm not going to be doing this today. So I'm going to do it the lazy way of doing it with this required, but it's going to work just absolutely fine. And also when we do the model or database, that's going to have some validation as well. I do want to mention that I do have a video on backend validation. If you want to check this out, I'll link it in the description below. Now, the next thing that we can do is literally copy this and paste it. And where it says first name, we just need to replace everything with last name. So last name, this is going to be last, last name. So I'm going to copy the ID needs to go last name, name needs to go last name. The placeholder needs to go last name, save. And this is also required. Now that we're done with this, we can actually do another row. So I can copy this, paste it, and let's just add two more fields. This is going to be a telephone and the label is going to be for tell just for short. And then I'm going to say ID tell first name, sorry, name is going to be tell value is going to be empty. Placeholder is going to be telephone and we can also have it required. The next one is going to be email. So this is going to be email. Let's change this to email as well. And now we can replace the ID to email, name to email, value empty, placeholder can be just email. And then we can set this as required as well. And now we can do another div for the, for the customer details maybe. One thing that I just spotted now, this needs to be form group. Sorry about that, so I need to change it everywhere. Oh, it's only two of them. Okay, that's all good. So what I'm going to do is copy this form group based in here, and I'm going to remove the first one. And in fact, I'm going to remove the call like so. We probably don't need the row either, and we should be good to go. This is going to be the customer details. So I'm going to have label for details. And I'm going to say customer details. And then this is going to be this is not going to be an input. This is going to be a text area. And then this text area is going to have a name of details, ID of details, rows of 12. And I'm going to say a placeholder to be customer details. Save this. And the last thing that I'm going to do is copy this one more time, paste it, and inside here, I'm going to create or submit button and inside here, I'm going to do a button and this button, this is very important is going to be the type of submit. This is what's going to submit the data. And now we're going to do a class of BTN, BTN primary, and then add customer. Save. If you go back to the page, hopefully we should be able to see the page. It looks, this looks a little bit odd. Let me have a look at what I've broken. So the text area probably needs some classes. So it needs to have a class name of form control. Save this, let's go back. And that's looking a lot better. So if I was to submit this, you'll see that we do have some browser validation. And this is purely because we have the required here. All right, now we need to create the post route. So as of now, we have a get route so we can go to the customer page. But when we click on this, we need to be able to post data. Let's go back to our route customer and maybe let's just make a space. And here where we have the add customer, um, add customer controller, we can copy this. And instead of get, we need to change this to post because we're going to be posting data. And this can stay the same. So we want to post on the same page, but instead of add, we can maybe do post like so, and we need to create this. So if I was to do control and click on this one here, this is going to lead me to the controllers, customer controller here, where we have all of the controllers. And now we need to create this controller. So what I'm going to do is copy this and then go here. And then instead of get, I'm going to do post and then I don't know, create new customer something like this. And instead of add customer, this needs to be posted as well. Very important. It needs to match the route here. 
base customer. And now you can change the title if you wish, new customer added. And we want to render the same page, which is absolutely fine. Now, before we do anything with the database, let's have a look at how we can actually grab the data that we're posting. So we have the forms, each form has a name, and we can use that name to actually grab the information and post it. So what I'm going to do is when I click add, I'm going to post some information and we want to display it in the console here. So to do this, we're going to do all of it in the uh, post controller here. And what we can do is do the console.log and then we can do the request and the body information. If you remember earlier in this tutorial inside the app.js, we added the, where is it? We added the express URL encoded and this is what's going to help us to grab the data. So let me show you what I mean. So inside here, we have console.log request body. And if I save this, and if you go back, all right, let's put rad a, some telephone numbers, an email, and then customer detail. Let's post this. And now, as you can see, the page posted and it rendered, but nothing actually happened visually. So if I go back to the console, you should be able to see that we actually got the data that we just posted. So we have the first name, the last name, the telephone, email, and details. So we actually can use this now to post into the database. But before we do that, we need to create the database fields. Kind of like if you're familiar with MySQL, you need to create each field. So let me show you how we can do that. And this is called model. So we need to model our data. If we go back to the Explorer and under, let me untoggle everything. If we go to the server, we can create a new folder called models. Inside this models folder is where we can create our customer model. Inside here, we can do customer.js. And now we need to require mongoose. So let's do const mongoose equals require and then we are requiring mongoose like so and now we need to create a schema in order to do this we can do const schema equals mongoose and then dot schema and now we can start creating our customer schema by doing const customer schema equals new schema and inside here, in curly brackets, we can start creating our schema. So we're going to have the same fields as in our form. So we're going to start with first name. We can do different options. Today, I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm going to do a type. And then this is going to be a string. I can set this as a required field by doing required. Set to true. And now we can pretty much copy and paste this by doing comma and let's just copy this, paste it and change this to last name because it's the same. It's just a string. It's required. And then we can do the same for tell or telephone. So string required email. Uh, we can do string required created at. So this is when we create the record. It might be useful to know that. So I'm going to do created that. And instead of type string, I'm going to do date. This is going to be automatically created. And the last one that I'm going to do, just in case, which is going to be the updated that. So if we update our record, maybe we need to, maybe we can put that in there as well. And I'm going to do the type of date again. And this can be required. Or do we need them required? I don't know. Maybe that doesn't need to be required. And the last thing that we need to do is to export this by doing at the bottom here, we can do module dot export equals mongoose dot model. And then inside here, we put the customer model, call it customer, and then we export the customer schema. All right, cool. We have our schema configured here, but we actually need to include this into our customer controller if we wish to use it. So if we close this, let's go back to the customer controller, which is under server controllers, customer controller. And at the top here, we can include the customer controller 
So by doing cons customer, this is going to be the keyword that we're going to be using later. You will see. And then this is going to be equals require. And then we require dot dot slash models slash customer like so. And we also need to add mongoose in here as well. Const mongoose equals require. And then inside here, we require mongoose like so. All right, let's have a look at how we can actually use this model now in order to be able to insert the data. Let's go back here at the bottom where we're posting the new customer and we've already saw that we can grab the data by doing rec.body and we were able to display inside here, which is great. If we go back in here, I can leave this in here just so you can have as an example. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to structure the data as a new customer so it's easier to work with. So what we're going to do is const new customer. And inside here, I'm going to create new customer. And then in curly bracket, we're going to start typing the field. So for example, first name, the important, and then we can grab the data from the rec.body. So inside here, we can grab first name, last name, tail, email, and details by doing rec.body. So what I'm going to do is copy this. And in fact, if you wish to, you can just do it manually. You can just put rad. And that will be inserted but instead of course i want it to be dynamic so we can do rec.body and i'm gonna put the first name to access that object so we can do so with a comma we can do hold shift down and we can change this to last name i can copy this paste it and then i can continue doing this for the rest so maybe details details copy tell is going to be tell copy email this is going to be email in fact in our model just in case remove the created that required okay just in case let's remove that all right, now that we have this object here and we can get all the data, very important thing inside here is that we're using an asynchronous function and we can wrap everything into a try catch. For example, inside here, I can do try catch. We definitely don't need this because we're going to be redirecting. Let's close it. And inside the try is where I'm going to rest the render. So I'm going to move that inside here. But we need to create that record. And to do this, it's actually fairly simple. We can do await customer, which is our customer model that we inserted here at the top customer. And then we can do dot create. And then we can pass the data from the new customer object in here and save. Now, when we do this, what I'm going to do instead of res dot render, I'm going to actually do res redirect. On the rest of redirect, I'm just going to do in single quotes slash so we can go to the dashboard and I'm going to show you how we can use flash messages just so we can say, okay, a new user has been added. And then let's tidy things up. And then for the catch, let's just do console.log and then the error. Oops. Like so. Okay, this should be good enough in order to be able to insert data so let's go back to the browser super quickly inside here inside the collection let's refresh now you might be wondering well how did you create the test and the customers well first of all the test was actually created when we because we saved the project here nodemon refreshed and it went to dot env and this is where test comes from so that's why you can change to whatever you like and then the second reason that we have the uh the table there the customer table is because we created the model in here and we've actually included it um, and we actually included it in our project and that's how we created it so saving this save absolutely everything uh, by the way i removed the required for the created at and the updated at just in case and yep save everything 
And now let's have a look whether we get some data. So I'm going to go back to the website, dashboard, maybe click add new user. And then I'm going to put Brad, a telephone number, the email, and then Node.js, add customer. And now we're going to dashboard, which is a good sign. And now if you go back to the database here, uh, there, is, there is a refresh button on the right side here. And here we go. We have our first object in here. So we have a unique ID that we can use later on in order to query customers. We have the first name, the last name, the telephone, and the email, which is awesome. All right, so everything is looking good, but created that and the updated that didn't work. And this is because this is where I got a little bit confused. But basically inside our models, I forgot to do something. This is when I added required and I was like, mm, that doesn't look good. Okay. So instead of, uh, so type date is correct, but we need to set a default created at and the and default updated at. And in order to do this, we can just do comma and inside here we can do default. And then the default value for this can be just the JavaScript date dot, n dot now, like so. And we can copy this and paste it. So comma updated that is going to be default date now so you can do default values inside here as well save this let's go back and let's try to insert another record so dashboard add new user uh, i'm gonna put bob a one two three then i'm gonna put email bob at the website and then and then bob's details add customer and now if you go back to the database refresh okay now we have two records in here I'm going to delete the first one. And now we should have the last record in here, which is Bob, last name, A, telephone number, email. And now we have the created that and the updated that, which we can use in our application. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video super quickly and create a couple of records. So we have something in our database and potentially I'll include those records so you can add them as well so you don't have to do it manually basically what i've done is uh, i've created a super quick query that is just there's a wait customer insert many and then i'm just listing a couple of customers here like so just so we have some data and i'm gonna copy this and make sure that you have this as well if you wish to or i can just put it as a json file and then you can do this okay so save i'm gonna save this and hopefully i haven't tested it but we have one object in here Hopefully if I go to dashboard and if I go to add new, now if we refresh, I should have a couple of users. Okay, cool. All right, we have a couple of users and now we can start looking at our dashboard and the other pages. Cool. All right, I'm definitely going to need to remove this. Otherwise, just going to keep adding stuff. So since we since we just uh, learned how to add data one thing that uh, you might notice is that when we added data it redirected us to the dashboard and we didn't really know that the data was inserted and for this you could use flash messages but it's a little bit confusing but super simple so i'm going to show you how to do it so in app.js we need to include press flash messages and we can do that maybe around here so what i'm going to do is const in curly brackets, I'm going to bring flash. And then this is going to be equals require. And then inside here, we're going to do express flash messages like so and save. So in order to be able to use flash messages, we actually need to bring express session as well. So, so we're going to be using cookies. And to do this, we can do const session. And inside here, we can do equals require. And then inside here, we can do express session like so somewhere under static files, maybe here, I'm going to do another comment and this is going to be called express session. And I'm going to do a very basic example from their documentation. So let's do app.use and inside here, we need to do session. And there are a couple of options. For example, we need to set a secret word for this example. I'm going to keep it simple, resave. I'm going to put to false. Then we have safe initialize. This needs to be set to true. 
and then we're gonna have cookie and then this needs to be set to max age and then the age of the cookie 1000 times 60 times 60 times 24 times 7 which is one week okay that should do the job now we need to apply the flash messages middleware so somewhere out here and to do this we can do app.use flash and then inside here we can do session key name flash message Make sure you close this and that's looking good all right restart the application and something is not looking good flash is not a function all right so i'm getting an error saying flash is not a function and originally i was thinking that it could be express flash messages but express flash message but what i've done wrong is when i was installing express flash message i actually installed express flash messages so what we need to do is close our application and then we can do clear and I'm going to do npm uninstall and I'm going to do express flash messages so we can remove this and now I'm going to do npm install i for install and remove the s at the at the end so press enter okay hopefully this should work now so so now we have message in here which is good save it and now we have so now we are requiring the message we also have the express session in here and we have the flash message middleware save this let's go back to powershell and let's do npm start and now okay our application is now working if i go back to the website everything is working and now we can start using the flash messages cool all right to do this it's actually fairly simple so what i'm going to do is close app.js so we have rest.redirect but before that we can create all flash message so i'm going to do a wait request.flash and now inside here i'm going to do info and now we can do new customer has been added this requires one more step and we need to go to the dashboard page which is here at the top which is our home page at the moment and we need to include the message in here so const message equals await quest dot consume consume flash and then inside here we put info now we should be able to pass this message just like we're passing the locals but because we're passing two objects so we need to put everything into curly brackets like so and space them out with a comma so comma and then message and in fact instead of message put this as messages sorry like so and save and now if you go back to the explorer and open in views open the home page or dashboard page inside here just to show you first of all i'm going to do ejs ejs and then i'm going to do ejs out here and i'm going to display the messages like so now if you go back to the browser and refresh you will see that we have nothing we have no messages but if we go to add new user let's add a new user super quickly add customer now we have new customer has been added and this comes from the controller here at the bottom which is new customer has been added to make this look a little bit better to make this look a little bit better what we can do is wrap this into a bootstrap alert so to do this we can do dot alert dot alert success dot alert dismissible dot fade dot show press enter and inside here is where we're gonna put the actual message we can set the row for this to be alert just like in the bootstrap documentation and then we can create the dismissal button which is going to be a button or the type of button 
the cast of btn close data dash bootstrap dash dismiss equals alert and then we can do area label of close and then close the button all right hopefully if we refresh now we are getting or alert here we're actually getting an empty alert here and there are two ways of doing this uh, if you have more messages if this object contains more messages we can wrap this into a for loop or you can simply check whether the message is empty or not so the first way would be let's just do a for loop like so or no for each here we go each and now if we have more messages in here we can definitely uh, display them so i'm gonna put this i'm gonna put everything inside here and instead of messages now this becomes the message because we want to loop through it and i'm going to keep this element as element and instead i'm going to change this here so we're looping through messages we're giving it a name of element and then we're literally looping through uh, and then we are literally inserting the element if this had more elements in it so save this and now if we go back that problem is solved let's add a new user bob a telephone bob one two three at here we go new customer has been added and that doesn't look right so i can fix it super quickly and this is because i spelled dismissible wrong it needs to be i cool and now i should fix the problem now and it should look like this and then you can dismiss it all right now that we have a couple of customers we can actually display them here on the page and we can look into pagination first of all i'm gonna start simple for the people that don't want to do the pagination and then we'll build on this so first of all let's go back and find the customer controller and let's scroll to the top where we have the export homepage so most of the stuff it's already done and we just need to do a query and get the customer in order to do this we can wrap everything into a try catch let me tidy things up so inside here i can just do try catch and we're using an asynchronous function which is good we can now uh, query the customer so this is going to be the basic version to start with so let's do const customers and then this is going to be equals await and then we're going to do customers sorry customer which is or customer here customer model and then this is going to be dot find and then inside here we can just put curly brackets which is literally going to find everything inside customer and we can chain this and put limit like so and then the limit can be let's say 22 record right so the maximum customers that we're going to get will be 22 now in order to be able to display them we can do exactly the same thing as locals and messages so i'm going to grab this put it into or try here and then this is going to be res.index and then we're passing the locals the messages and we also want the customers here we go here is the customers we're passing that and technically speaking we should be able to get the data now and and inside the catch we can do for now we can just do console.log and then the, and then the error if we go back to the page refresh everything is looking good let's build our little table now if we go back to let me close everything so we're going to go back to the index.js which is our dashboard here inside views and now after the flash messages here we can build our table let's create a div with the class name of table responsive and inside this div we're going to create a table and this table is going to have class of table table striped and table small we're going to create the table head by doing t head like so and inside here we're going to do a table row tr and then inside the table row we're going to do th and inside this in fact this is going to be scope equals scope and inside here we're going to do first name and now we can copy this by doing alt shift down this can be last name 
telephone. Email. And then action. This is where we're going to put the buttons. And for the action, I'm going to give it a class name of text, text, and to push it at the bottom, you'll see in a second. And then for the table body around here, we're going to do T body. And inside the T body, we're going to do a for reach to loop through the elements. So for this, I'm going to do, let's do EJS. And then I'm going to put the each here. So for each. So we're getting the customers. We're passing, sorry, we're passing the customers from here. Let's copy that and put it. And we're looping through them. And you can call this whatever you like. I'm going to keep it as element. And now inside here, we're going to create the table rows. So TR with the class name of align middle. I'm going to open EJS and put EJS out like so. And let's do element dot and then we do first name. We copy this one, two, three, four. So this time we have last name, tell, email. And actually for this one, we need to remove this because we're going to be adding a bunch of buttons in here. So I'm going to do a div with the class name of the flex. Flex row, justify content end. And then gap two. Inside here is where we're going to be adding the view button, the edit button, and the delete button. So let's do that. These are going to be links. href, the first one is going to be view. And then we're going to put the element ID. So for this, I'm going to do EJS. And then out, we're going to grab the element. And then the ID of the element in MongoDB is just ID. If you go to the database, you'll see that. And this is going to be a link with the type of button. The class name of BTN. BTN primary. And BTN small. I'm also going to add an icon that I've copied for Bootstrap icons. Um, and this icon is I class BI Bootstrap icons. BI dash I which is just an eye. So I'm going to copy this. So this is going to be a viewing button. You'll see in a second. And this is going to be our edit button. And again, we're going to leave the ID. And instead of the primary, we're going to do warning. And that's pretty much. And instead of the eye, I'm going to do pencil because this is an edit button. And the last one is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be a form and I'm going to show you how this works later on. So I'm going to do form. And this form is going to have an action. And this is going to have the action of edit slash and then the element ID like so. But also we need to chain it with method equals delete. And I'm going to show you how this works. Don't worry. Also, we can do method post and class position relative. Inside this form, we're going to have a button that's going to actually submit the form. So type of submit. Class name of BTN, BTN danger. And BTN small. Close this button and inside this button, I'm going to add another icon and save. So we've written a little bit of code in here. Hopefully there is nothing wrong with it. Let's save it and let's go back to the page and refresh. All right. Awesome. Uh, that's not too bad. So we're getting the first name. We're getting the last name, the telephone number and the email. And we're getting the icons. I do want the icons to be on the right side. So that will be a case of just changing a class name potentially. Let's have a look. And to this table data, we can just give it a class name of a line of text end. And hopefully that should solve my issue. All right, text end. And I've misspelled justify content. I think. Let's have a look. Cool. Yeah, that's it. 
So we're getting 22 results. I don't know how much we have in the database. And if I go back to the database and refresh, so we have this one, two, three record here. Let's go to the bottom. And here it is. Updated this. And let's just update. All right, so I've updated that record. And if I refresh, you'll see that it says updated this. Cool. All right, so for the people that want to do the pagination, this is what I'm going to do next. You don't have to do it. It's a little bit uh, more complex than this. And if you don't want to do that, just skip this part and so on. Now, and then the rest will work absolutely fine. It, it doesn't really matter. So let's do the pagination next. So for the pagination, we're going to have to do a more complex query. So in our customer controller, where we have our homepage, at the moment, we're just querying the customer database and we're getting the 22 records. Now, this is not good enough in order to do the pagination. We're going to have to do a little bit, something a little bit more complex. And so for the people that don't want to do this, I'm going to Come, I'm going to copy this and comment it out so we have it here as an example when I upload the code on GitHub. But what I'm going to do is paste in here and start modifying this quite a bit. All right, by the time I actually coded this video, I was on Mongoose 6.9.2 and now we're on Mongoose 7.0.0 and there are already new changes which is in a way a good thing. So you get the latest, but it's annoying that I had to pause and redo some of the code that I did, but it actually ended up being better anyway. So what I'm going to do now is leave this as it is, and I'm going to paste it here. And in fact, the new code won't be too bad. For the homepage, we're going to have all flash messages here. That's fine. We're going to have all title and description. That's fine. But now we need to have a look at the pagination step right above try is I'm going to set the how many requests do you want per page. So I'm going to do let per page equals 12. And then I'm going to do let page equals and then request dot query and then dot page or one. So basically this is going to grab the query parameter called page from the URL. I go back to the browser and if we have a look here at the URL, if you do question mark and page for example, and then if you put a number, so let's say two, this is what we're going to be getting. We're going to be getting this parameter by doing rec.query page. And of course you can change the name of whatever you want, but if we don't get one, so if we don't get a number, the default value is going to be one. All right. And inside here, we need to do const and do customers equals await and then we're going to do customer dot aggregate i want to basically get the uh, records sorted by updated at and in order to do this in curly brackets inside here we can do sort and then we're going to do another curly bracket and then updated at and then we're going to put minus one after this we can chain a few more options in here so I can do dot skip and then we're going to do per page times the page and then minus per page. Then we're going to have dot limit and then this is going to be per page, which is currently 12. And then the last thing we're going to do is execute this. I'm not actually sure whether we need this now, uh, but let's go with it. The next thing that I'm going to do is count the customers. And in order to do this, we can do const count equals and then await customer dot count. And then we close. Now let's render all of the data. So rest dot render. And we need to render the index page. And then in curly brackets, we can start with locals which is our title and description customers like so which is the data from the database and then the uh we're gonna need the current page page which is the 
page from the URL, like so. So that's going to be helpful with the pagination. And then we're going to need the pages. And we want to run this by doing math.selly and then count divided by per page, like so. And we're also missing the messages, so I'm going to add them in here. This is the flash messages, and we should be good to go, I believe. So if we close this, tidy things up, save everything, go back to the browser and refresh. Okay, we're still getting the data, which is great. If I was to change this to, is it one, I believe? Let's have a look. Yep, we're getting a different order. It's actually working. So that's cool. Update it. So now let's build the pagination and I'm going to be using the bootstrap pagination styles to make it look nice. If we go back to the views and then index.js, just outside the table that we created, the responsive table where we're rendering all the data, we can do the pagination inside here. And before we begin, I just want to explain how this is going to work. So all pagination is going to look something similar to this. We're going to have first link and then in between we're going to have the pages so one two three four five and then if you have more than five we're going to have the dot 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 which is not going to be clickable and then we're going to have another link called last so essentially if you are on page one the first link is going to look disabled if you are on the last page the last link is going to be disabled because you won't be able to click it but if you are anywhere in between those we're going to have the first one clickable and the last one clickable and of course they're all going to be clickable as well and that's how it's going to work pretty much so let's start by building this first of all if we go back to the query here you will see that we are passing the customers so there is no point of actually rendering the pagination if we don't have any customers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do an ejs if condition here and i'm going to say if customers dot length is bigger than zero then we can display the pagination and now if we go back and refresh you'll see that we're getting pagination which is good let's remove that and let's start by writing the navigation so i'm going to be using the example from bootstrap and let's start by doing nav we're going to have a area label and this is just going to say dashboard pagination like so and then we're going to have an unordered list in here and then this unordered list is going to have a couple of classes starting with pagination then justify content center we want it to be in the middle and then margin top of five like so and then inside here is where we can start doing the checks and also we can start building the list let's have a look at the first one here and I'm going to do EJS if, and then the condition for this is if we have the current page, which we're passing from here. So we actually get in the page from the URL and then we're passing it here. So current. So if the current page is equals equals one, then we want to make sure that the first link is there, but it's disabled. So what I'm going to do is create a list. This list is going to have a class name of page-item and is going to have the class name of disabled. Like so, and inside here, we can create a link, href. I'm going to have it as an empty link. And then this is going to have a class name of page-link. And then we can just say first. Like so. And then I need a nail statement. We need to open it. EJS, close it. And now inside here, we can pretty much copy this list like so. And then instead of disabled, we can remove this and we can change the link to question mark page equals one. So this is the, uh, if we click on it, it goes to page one. In fact, we could just put slash um, because that's the default page, but uh, that will work either way. Okay, and save let's test this so now if you go back and refresh you will see that we're getting the first link 
and it's disabled because we're on the first page. Technically speaking, if I change this to, you should be able to see it that it lights up and now I can click on it and it goes to page one. Okay. So let's go back and let's do the rest. The next piece of code will be actually the first dot, which I kind of didn't explain. So it's going to be first, we're going to have dot, dot, dot. If we are on page above five, we can put dot, dot, dot. And then we will have, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five. And then we'll have last. And then if we are all the way around, if you're on page five, we'll have the dots in here. All right. I hope that makes sense. You'll see how it works in a second. Let's start EJS. And inside here, we're going to do a variable of I equals, we need to convert the current number to number. So number current. And then we can do a check if it's bigger than five. Or we can do number and then current. We can do the subtracted by four and divided by one. And then inside here, we can do EJS. And if I is not equals one, then we can display the dot. So now we can do EJS, close this, and inside here we can pretty much copy the, the disabled link here. So I'm going to copy this one, paste it, uh, we need to close it. Okay, so page item disabled, uh, the link can be disabled, the page link is fine, and instead of first we're going to do dot dot dot. Now we probably won't see this, if I go back, uh, yeah, we won't see this unless we, uh, it's because I don't have enough records. So we'll see this in a second or I need to change the query. Right, we'll see this in a second how it works. The next piece of code is, is going to loop through the numbers. So let's build that. We need to do a for loop. So I'm going to do EJS for, and then inside here, we're going to, in fact, I'm going to change the whole thing. So we need to initialize the uh, I, and then I'm going to do less or equals than number and then we are converting the current into a number and then we can do some checks so plus four and then inside here we can do and and i less or equals pages and then we do i plus plus and inside here we can do an if statement so ejs if and then the condition for this would be if i is equals equals the current page then we want to show a disabled link. So I'm going to copy this one here and page item disabled. That's fine. That's fine. And instead of this, we're actually going to change it to the actual number that we're looping from. So I'm going to do EJS and then out and then just put I. All right, save this and let's have a look super quickly. We have both the first links here disabled, but they're, but they're popping out. And now we need to do the rest. So we're going to have an else. And then inside here, I'm going to do EJS. Close the else statement and get another link. So this one here. And this one is going to be list class page item. We're going to remove this. And we're going to change the link to be slash question mark page. And then we put the number here. So we want this to every single link to change. So what I'm going to do is open EJS like so, close it, and inside here we put the number. And then again, we render the number in here so it's visible to the user. So now if I save this and if I go back to the page and refresh, we're getting an error. And this is because I've opened else. And this is because I spelled else wrong. Okay else okay and now we should be good to go okay so we have first one two and if i click on two we're getting some more records and they light up if i go back to one we uh this is switching okay great let's have a look at the rest the last one is going to be the dot 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 link so for this i'm going to do another if statements in here ejs if and then the condition for this is going to be if i is equals equals number current plus four and and i smaller than pages we can close ejs like so and inside here we can get another list so maybe in fact this one here the disabled one and then we can do page link can stay the same 
but this one I'm going to change to dot 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 like so and that's it and the last thing that I'm going to do which is going to be let me fix the indentation super quickly and the last thing that I'm going to do which is going to be pretty much the same as this so we might as well copy it this is going to be the last link but it looks like I've uh, closed another EJS in here which doesn't look good right hopefully that will work I removed it yes yeah, seems fine okay maybe I just put one extra that's fine so let's paste it in here and then this one is going to be different is equals equals pages and then the first link is going to become last and this is going to become last as well and instead of doing this we're going to change it to EJS and we're going to do pages like so remove that okay i think that looks good if i go back you will see that we're getting one two and last if i click on the last page we're getting page two with all the records and if i click on the first one we're getting the first one now if i go back to the actual query under customer controls and let's change this to i don't know uh six maybe and then if i go back hopefully yeah we we're getting more pages now so we need a little bit more record so i'm gonna put this but uh free per page here we go so we got free per page makes it look like we've got more records but uh when we're on the first page here we can't click them we can click two three four five six and now we can't click the last because we're on the last page we're getting the dot 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 i can go first last and so on so i'm going to put this back to 12 but you get the point and that's pretty much going to be all pagination. All right, let's refresh. And now let's have a look at how we can view customers, make a nice detailed page, and then how we can edit them and also delete them. So starting from the first link here, let's go back to the actual link, which is under index.ejs, and we've got them hidden here. So we um, link this under views, and we are passing the element ID of the actual record. So this, if I inspect it super quickly, let me have a look. It's, I'm not sure if you can see, but this is the ID of the record. So if I was to go to the, uh, to the database, you will see that each user has unique identifier and that's done by underscore ID. And we can use this unique identifier to create the specific records. And that's how we are getting it from here basically that's pretty much it so we need to create this view page and then we need to pass the id first of all let's start by closing this down and let's go to views customers and let's create the page so inside here we're going to do view dot ejs and then i'm going to put view customer just for now and then we'll come back to this we also need to do the route so inside route customers Somewhere around here, we need to add a new route. Add it around here. And what I'm going to do is copy one of them. Let's copy a get route. And this one is going to be router.get view. And in order to be able to pass the ID and grab it from the URL, we can do something like this. So you can call this whatever you like. I'm just going to call it ID. And then for the customer controller, I'm just going to say, I don't know, let's say view or view customer, whatever you wish. So let's keep it like that. And now we need to create this controller. So if I go to the, I'm going to copy this. If I go to the controllers somewhere at the bottom here, let's create a new one. So this is going to be get customer data. And I'm going to copy this from here super quickly. So we have export, view, async, and then we close. And now we can do the logic inside here. So this is actually going to be pretty simple. So what we can do is try. And then inside here, we can do const customer. And then this is going to be equals await customer dot point one. And then inside here, we pass the ID. We want to query it by ID, so ID. And then we get, grab the parameter from the URL, which is going to be request.params.id. This is how we grab it from the URL. I'll show you how it works. All right. And now we can do exactly the same thing that we've been doing with the rest of the stuff. So we can set up some locals. Uh, let's copy this. 
and then this these locals view customer data that's fine and then we can do res.render and then we need to render the page that we want to render so in this case this is going to be under customer which is here and then this is going to be slash view which we just created and then we can pass the stuff that we want for example we can pass the locals that's the title and description and then we can pass the customer data which we grab from the database right now and now after the try we can do catch and then we can catch the error and then inside here comes a log error from now cool so that's pretty much the view done all we need to do is render the data and make it look nice so if we close this and if we focus on the actual make sure that you save this by the way and if we focus on the actual view page in here let's make it work so first of all if we go back and refresh everything should be working and if i click on one of the records you'll see that here we're getting the path view with the unique id of the customer that we just selected and we're just getting view customer because we don't have anything on the page just yet the first thing that i'm going to do is grab the header from index.js so i'm going to grab this just to make it look nice and then paste in here so instead of dashboard view customer and in fact let's display the customer name just to check whether this is working so instead we're going to do ejs and then for this we're going to do customer fact equals customer dot first name and then we can also do ejs let's do the last name as well so the same thing dot last name like so and save if we go back hopefully that would september wharton very cool name uh if we go back and if we click on kermit becker we should get kermit becker which is pretty cool so we definitely don't need this add button here in the toolbar but maybe i'm gonna keep this empty for you maybe we can do something else like let's say a button a type of button just to make it look nice but it's not gonna it's not gonna do much so btn btn small btn outline just so you have an example and then this is gonna be secondary and then maybe you just put share i don't know what you're gonna do um, we can copy this one one more time and then do export we're not going to be doing these features but just to show you that you can add them in here and make them look nice because we have this add new button in here that's pretty much it let's go to let's go back to Kermit Becker and let's have a look at the rest I'm going to create a bunch of diffs and display the, the information in a nice way so I'm going to do call part into the y axis of three and then inside this column i'm going to do a dot row and inside this row i'm going to do dot com and inside this column i'm going to put some breadcrumbs so we've already got breadcrumbs somewhere inside the ad page i believe so i'm going to copy them um, here they are navigation breadcrumbs i'm going to copy that and paste it inside here and then this is going to go to dashboard and inside here we can render the customer first name if you wish so instead of new customer we can render customer name save go back and we get a nice little breadcrumb in here tidy things up and now to make it even more fancy we can do another column and inside this column we can in fact let's give it a few more class names so text end because i want to push the text to the end font weight of lighter and then inside here i'm gonna do just some demo stuff let's say b and then i'm gonna say last updated and then inside here i'm gonna do ejs and then we can get the customer last updated but in fact let me show you so let's do customer dot last update no updated at Is it last updated or updated at? I cannot remember. Updated at is what I've used. Okay, so updated at and make this equals. So what's gonna happen here if we go back? 
you see that we're getting a lot of information last updated and then Sunday, March 05, 2003 at the time, Greenwich time and so on. Now with a little bit of JavaScript, you can convert this to whatever you like. Uh, there are also some nice libraries that can help you with stuff like that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do new date. Then I'm going to put the customer updated at inside here. And then I'm going to do this to UTC string. And then close the function like so. And now if we go back, you'll see that it makes it a little bit better for me. So last updated Sunday or 5 March 2023. And I'm going to do one more in here. So B to make it bold, I think. User ID. And I'm going to put the user ID inside here. Maybe I can put it after the B. So I'm going to do EJS out. And then we're going to do customer dot underscore ID. And now if we go back, we should be able to get the customer ID. We could do with a bit of space between them. Uh, make them bold, but these are things that I'm going to do a little bit of space like so. Okay, but these are things that you can always work on. So now let's have a look at how we can list some of the customer data. And I'm going to do another div inside here and make it look nice. So in fact, this is going to be an unordered list with the class name of list group. And then inside here, I'm going to do a bunch of lists. So list. And then this list is going to have a class name of list group item. There are a lot of ways you can style this, but I think this is just an easy, nice looking way. And then we can create a row with a column. And then we're going to have this column. I'm actually going to do a little bit of styling here and you'll see why. Style and this is going to be equals max with to be 140 pixels you'll see why in a second and then inside here i'm going to put the name so in bold name like so we close the div and then on another line i'm going to do another code and then inside this code we're going to grab the name so ejs equals and then customer dot first name and then i'm going to do space EJS customer dot last oops last name like so save it and I keep opening this now if we refresh you will see that we're getting a nice table in here and we have the name of Kermit Becker I can zoom in a little bit just so you can see and now we can do the same pretty much for the rest of the styling and that will be really fast so what I'm going to do is copy this and the first one is going to be the telephone. So I'm just going to put tell. And then instead of first name, we're going to put the tell and remove the name from here. Drop done. Save it. Yep. Looking good. Now let's do the rest. This is going to be email. Email. Let's do a few more details. Details. Maybe we can do create it out. So date created maybe. Created at and then one more. And this is gonna be the updated date modified. And updated at. Let's have a look at what we get. All right, so not too bad. Details is the only one that didn't work. Um, all right, and this is because when I was building the actual database, I actually forgot, totally forgot to uh, do the customer details. And this is an easy one. You can just go to the customer model and add one more field. For example, after email, we can put details. But now my database doesn't have any of the information. So what I'm going to do, uh, details will be absolutely fine let's have a look so maybe i can put rad a telephone number email and then radis details okay if we submit this hopefully if we go back to the database i'll have to create new records with that field let's have a look so we have it's probably going to be at the bottom 
Okay, yeah, we have Radi's details in here. And yeah, I didn't create any of the records with that field in mind. Anyways, so if we refresh this, we have Rad in here. And if I click on it to view it, you see that the details are actually working. So I just totally forgot to add this, which is fine. I'm not going to convert those because I've already showed you how you can do that. Um, but that's pretty much going to be all detail view. And of course, you can build on this and uh, make it look the way you want. The next one I'm going to do is the edit. So the edit is actually going to be pretty much exactly the same as adding a new user. And which means that this is going to be an easy one. All right. So what I'm going to do is let's have a look at the edit button. First of all, let me close everything. And if we go to index.ejs, and if we look at the edit button super quickly before we not pagination, all right, the edit button here. So the edit button is exactly the same as the view. We are passing an element ID, a record ID, and basically we're going to an edit page. So let's build that. So what I'm going to do is let's go to the route super quickly. And then inside here, we can create a new route. And let's just space it out so we can focus on it. And this route is going to be edit. Again, this is a get route and we're passing the ID. And instead of view, maybe we can just do edit. That will be fine. And now let's create this controller. So if I click on the controllers, uh, it's going to lead me to the controllers in here. And somewhere at the bottom, maybe I can copy one. Maybe I can copy this one here, get data, because it's going to be similar. So instead of view, we're going to get uh, get edit customer data. This is going to be edit. And then inside here, we want to query the customer that we're looking for, just like we did in the view. Uh, we're passing some local, so edit customer data, that's fine. And then we're rendering the page, which is customer, and then edit. We need to create this page. So let's do that. In views, customers, let's create one more page. But I'm going to copy the contents from add because I believe that most of it is going to be the same. So let's copy the whole thing and create a new page and do edit EJS. Hopefully it will be the same thing. All right, save this. And now let's jump to the top here and let's say edit instead. Okay, so let's have a look whether this works first of all before we do anything else. Save everything. All right, save everything. Let's go back. And now if we click on edit, you will see that we're getting exactly the same form as the ad form. But now we can just change a couple of things and make it work. So the first thing that I'm going to do here at the top header, I'm just going to say which customer that we're editing. I'm just going to put EJS with equals. So this is going to be customer dot, oops, not capital letter, small letter, customer first name. And then we can do EJS out and then customer last name like so and save. If you go back, we're getting Radi A because I didn't put a longer name. Let's go to Kermit here. And as you can see, we, uh, oops, sorry. If we go to Kermit here and we press edit, you'll see that we say edit Kermit Becker or editing Kermit Becker. For the breadcrumbs, we can do exactly the same here. We can get the name instead of new customer. We can just print in here. And that would look pretty cool. Dashboard and then Kermit. Maybe we can just uh, do the last name as well. You're getting so Kermit last name like so. And that would be cool. Um, user ID is where we can put the user ID as well. So what I'm going to do is put customer and then underscore ID. Let's refresh and we're getting the customer ID just in case if we need them because we're editing. And now we can start populating some of the fields with the real data from the database. So view will wrap just so you can see a little bit better. And actually just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to copy one more line in here and I'm going to change this to last updated. Last updated. And then this is going to be, um, I'm going to have to change this to make it look a little bit better. So in the bold here, we're going to do EGS out. 
and then inside here we're going to do new date and then i'm going to do customer dot updated at and then to utc s utc string like so and i think that will make it look nice okay we get last updated so every time we update the record this will hopefully change yeah i think that would be fine and now let's have a look at populating the actual form now a very important thing in here is that we need to change the form action so the action at the moment is add we need to change this to edit and not only that we need to change this to uh, which customer are we actually editing so we need to put ejs in here and customer underscore id like so close the ejs cool so when we press so when we submit this form this is gonna edit this customer here now we need to do a little bit more trickery in here and what i'm gonna do is question mark underscore method put equals put now i'm gonna show you how this works super quickly and we can leave the method post in here now if you remember early in this tutorial we installed something called method all right so this is gonna allow us to do stuff like put and delete let me show you super quickly if you go to the npm package method all right you'll see that it lets you http verbs such as put or delete in places where the client doesn't support it so that's what we're going to be using and it's actually fairly simple to set up so let me show you so we're going to go back to app.js super quickly and then at the top we need to include it so somewhere around here it doesn't matter too much we can do const method of write equals require and then we require method of write like so now we can do the middleware somewhere around here so i'm going to do app.use and then we're going to do method of write and then here the option is going to be underscore there are many ways to do this but this one is going to be underscore method and that's pretty much it so if application yep application is working that's good but let's go back to the edit page and concentrate on that now and now we need to populate the values coming from the database and in order to do this we can do ejs and inside here we can do the oh, customer dot first name and now I can copy this and I can do it uh, for the rest. So this one, we can go back just to check, but we're getting Kermit here, which is the, the name. And now if we go back to last name, let's do the same for the rest. So last name, then we have telephone. I think this was just tell. We'll see, this is just email. And then the customer details we need to change inside the text area here we can put details um, and now we need to change the submit button so instead of adding customer we can do update customer and we can do another button here which is going to be all the lead button so i'm going to copy this and change it a little bit the lead customer but i'll have a look into this in a second let's make sure that this is updating and then we'll do the delete as well so if i refresh now You'll see that we're getting all the data we do not have customer details on this particular record but if i go back to rad editor you'll see that we're getting rad details and i don't know why there is a lot of space in here i think it might be because i've done this so let's have a look. let's remove the space from here like so save it and refresh yeah that was causing the space i think so if i zoom out just so you can see we're getting update and delete obviously that can be changed all right and now let's sort out the update customer now when we click on the update customer obviously this is going to have an action which is going to be a method but but we don't have this in our route so what we need to do is go back to route and where we have the get so this is rendering the edit page we need to copy this and create one more and this is going to be put instead and then we have edit and the id which is absolutely fine and then edit and then i can call this something else edit post maybe all right let's go back to controllers and i'm going to scroll down to the bottom and copy the last one that we created which was the edit get customer detail 
So I'm going to copy this and paste in here. So instead of edit, we need to change this to edit post. And so I'm going to change it here and that's kind of it. So I'm going to rebuild the whole thing actually. So let's just remove everything and start clean. And then this is going to be update customer data, customer data. And now inside here, we're going to do a try catch and inside the try, I'm going to do the query. So we want to get all the data from the form, from the edit form, this one here, we want to get the data and update the record. So in order to do this, we can do a wait customer. And then this is going to be find one and update. And then inside here, we put the customer data. So we're going to have first name just like before. And then we're going to do request.body because we are sending uh, the information from the input, just like we done the add in form and then first name. Then I'm going to have to do this a few more times. One, two, three. I'm going to have to do five times. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to start this with uh, changing everything. Last name. Make sure that we, we put comma pretty much everywhere. And now let's change it. So last name. Then we're going to have telephone. Tell. Then we're going to have email. Then we're going to have details. And then we're going to have updated at. And then the updated at is going to be the only different one. We're going to get the current date by doing date dot now like so. Cool. And then the last thing that we need to do is we make we need to make sure that we are updating the correct record by doing where. And then inside here, we select which record we want to update and we can get the request parameters. So params and then dot ID. Um, and then the last thing that we need to do is redirect to the edit page. So the, uh, so we get the updated record straight away. So we can do rest dot redirect. And then inside here, we can do with the single slanted quotes, we can do edit slash and then dollar sign curly bracket and then request dot param params dot id and then for the catch we can just do console dot log error okay cool let's tidy things up super quickly all right quick update on the update customer data sometimes the record will not update you would find a different record and update another one, which is a little bit weird. We don't want that. And what I found is that we need to swap the find one and update. And instead we can do find by ID and update. And instead of having the where close in here, I can grab this and I can remove it now. Like so. And we can put the ID in here with a comma. And that should solve the issue. So now if I go to this user here, I can edit it, update, update. Okay, go back to the edit page, refresh, make sure everything is working fine. All right, and now if I click on right and say update it, update it, uh, update customer, you will see that we have right updated straight away because he updated the record in the database and he redirected us to the same page. So somewhere, if I refresh the database, we should be able to see that uh, reflecting straight away. I don't know where, here we go, rat updated. And this is the last record here. Um, as you can see, the created that and the updated date has changed, hasn't it? So yeah, it has changed. So I created it at 12 and now it's one and now it's half one. So yeah, the updated at has worked and we can do the same thing with the rest of the records, no JS and then I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then run these details, one, two, three, update. As you can see, everything stays the same. I can go to the dashboard. Uh, it's all updated here. I can view the record. As you can see, everything is be, everything has been updated, which is great. Last updated and it gives me the, the time right now. 
So as you can see, 1337, 1337. So that's good. So when we click on the edit here, we also want to delete customers and we can do that next. So if we go back to the edit page and if we go here at the bottom where we created the delete button, since we're using Bootstrap, since we're using Bootstrap, we can do this potentially in a nice, uh, fancy way. So instead of primary, let's do danger. And let's change a few things. So I'm going to do this with a motive. So when you click on the delete button, it's not going to delete the record straight away. It's going to ask you if you want to delete it. So this is going to be button type of button. We don't want to submit because it's going to delete the record again. And then this is going to have a class of button danger. That's fine. And now we need to do the data dash bootstrap BS and then toggle. And then the toggle that we want to do is just going to be code model like so. And then the ID is going to be delete button. And we also need a target. So this is going to be data bootstrap target. And this is going to be equals an ID, oops, an ID of delete button. Sorry, delete model. And then we have delete customer. If I save this, let's have a look. As you can see, we're getting the delete button here, which is fine. And now let's create the model super quickly. So for the model, I'm actually going to create it at the bottom here. There is a lot of examples on the bootstrap documentation. If you wish to copy and paste one. But I'm gonna create one super quickly. So dot modal dot fade because we want that nice fade animation. And then for this, we're gonna have tab index of minus one. Row is gonna be dialog. And the ID is gonna be the ID that we just added, delete button, like so. And then inside here, we need to create a few more divs. So model dialog. And this is going to have the row of document. Inside here, we're going to have a few more divs. Model content. And inside the model content, we're going to have model header. The model header is going to have model title. And I'm going to paste, you are about to remove a customer record. And then inside here, we're going to do a button. This button is going to have the type of a button with the class name of btn close. And then data dash bootstrap dash dismiss equals model. This is what's going to close the uh, model. An area label. To close. And I think that's it here. So for the body, we just want to put some text. So I'm going to do dot model body. And inside here, I'm going to create a paragraph and I'm going to paste something super quickly. And this is going to say this will remove the customer record of I'm just putting a boat and then customer first name, customer last name. And then I'm just doing a break just so we can break this on another line. And you just can you and it's just asking you, are you sure? Now that we have the body, we have a little bit more to go. The last piece here, which is the footer. So dot model footer. And then for the footer, I'm going to create a button. And then this button is going to have a type of a button class name of BTN dash BTN BTN dash secondary data dash bootstrap dash dismiss model. And then this is going to just say close. We can put that back in one line. And then the last thing we need to do is create a form which we can submit and delete just like we've done on the update. So I'm going to do form 
And this is going to be very important here. We need to put edit slash and then EJS. Oops. I'm going to open EJS like so. Close it. And it said here, we're going to do customer ID underscore ID. And then again, we're going to do question mark underscore method. And then this method is going to be equals delete. We also want method post and a class name of position relative. And inside this form, we need a button that is going to submit. So button with the type of submit. And then this is going to have the class name of BTN BTN primary. And I'm just going to say yes remove customer and let's have a look whether this works so save everything all right if i put the lead customer it's not working and it's because the id does not match or id inside here delete model so i need to do that instead all right my mistake and now if i save and if i go back we should be able to click the delete button now it fades in and it says are you about to remove you're about to remove this customer this looks a little bit small, but these are things that you can fix. And uh, this will remove the customer of rat updating Node.js. Are you sure? So if I click yes, if I click close, first of all, this will close. If I click this, it will close. And now if I click yes, remove customer, nothing is going to happen. And this is because we actually haven't the, done the delete route yet. So let's do that. So if you go back to route customer, where we have put, we need to make a delete one so i'm going to copy this line and put delete then we're deleting on edit and we're passing the id and then instead of uh edit post why did i call it post oh okay it doesn't matter it's because we're posting uh yeah the naming could be a little bit better but it doesn't matter maybe i can put delete customer all right i didn't think about this so delete customer and let's create this delete customer inside the controller. So at the bottom, maybe we can copy this one here and paste it inside here. So instead of get, this is going to be delete. Delete customer. Uh, this is going to be actually fairly simple. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to remove everything. And instead of edit post, we're going to do delete customer here we're going to do try catch super quickly and let's do console.log error and then for the try all we need to do is await customer and then we can do dot delete one and then we need to pass the id that we want to delete so we're going to do underscore id and then request dot params dot id which we are passing on submitting the form. And then the last thing that we're going to do is redirect, rest.redirect. And then we go to the dashboard, for example. And you could do another, and you could do another flash message just like we've done with the added customers, but to save, but we've already done that. So uh, that will be your little challenge. What we're going to do now is go back to the page, refresh, and let's delete this customer. So I'm going to click yes, remove customer. We have been redirected and now this customer is gone. If I delete this one as well. So let's go here, delete customer. Yes. And now as you can see, that customer is gone as well. And as you can see, that worked quite well. Uh, we can do exactly the same thing in here. Pretty much. We can just put a form for this button and make it delete the customer. So a quick way of doing this is if we go back to the dashboard here, where we have the form I actually created that already, but it looks a bit early in this tutorial. So hopefully this is just going to work, but we're not getting the, uh, what's it called? The model here, we just deleted. And what I'm going to do is refresh and let's say this one here, right? I'm going to delete and it's gone. Bob, I'm going to delete and it's gone and so on. So you get the point here. 
we can still add customers we can uh, edit them view them and so on and the last thing that we need to do i think is the search bar so let's create that so first of all let's close pretty much everything except the customer route i'm gonna need that and let's create a new page so so i'm not sure where to create this page maybe around here okay in views i'm gonna create a new page search.ejs let's do h1 search and now let's go back to the route and let's do another route here so i'm gonna copy one and then this one is gonna be router.post and then we're gonna have instead of edit we're gonna get search and this is going to be search customers like so and now let's create this controller i'm going to scroll to the bottom maybe copy this one here and paste it so instead of delete this is going to be search sorry this is going to be get and then this is going to be search customer data we also want to change the delete customer to search customer and i'm gonna wipe this out actually and start from zero just so we know what we're doing all right so if i was to all right first of all let's have a look at the search bar so if we go to partials and header this is where we have the search bar so we have a form and that form it has and that form has a me method of post and an action of search which goes to the search bar which goes to the search page now the important bit in here is this search input we have the name a search term so we want to be able to grab this search term and query the database let's have a look at how we can do that so inside here we can grab this by doing let search term equals request.body and then we just do search term this is the name so I'm going to remove any special character from the search. So I'm going to do const and then search no special characters equals search term dot replace. And I'm going to copy and paste a regex which is replace uh, special characters for us. And now we can do the query. To do the query we can actually we can wrap everything into a try catch so try catch might as well have this in here okay and now inside here we're going to do const customers equals and then await customer dot find and then inside here is where we're going to do the query so so what I want to do is I actually only want to find records uh, by first name and last name. Now you can modify this further if you wish to, but what I'm going to do is put all and then in brackets, we can specify what we want to search for. So I'm going to put first name and then this is going to be a regex in here. So new reg x search no special characters let me copy this and then i and then i'm gonna copy this line and do last name regex and then search no special characters and that should hopefully search in for the first name and the last name and now we also want to render records so we can do res dot render and then inside here we render in the search page and then the stuff that we want to render will be customers. Uh, maybe we could do title and description. Let's see where we have locals. Here we go. I'm going to grab this as well. And then where do we put them? Uh, anywhere around here will be fine. So I'm going to put locals, search customer data, and then we can do one more line. Locals. Okay. For the catch console log error cool so now let's build the search page first of all if we go back to the dashboard and if we submit anything i'm going to press one two three submit you will see that we're getting the search page i'm not going to do anything fancy in here i'm just going to display a few records so let's go back to the search page and let's build it up super quickly in fact i can potentially get the heading here 
Um, yeah, I can get the heading from the index.js and put it in the search here just to make it look nice. Search. And now we can focus on this super quickly. All right, I'm going to do a div with a class of table responsive. All right, let's build something super quickly in here. So EJS if, and then I'm going to say if customers are bigger than zero, hopefully. I haven't tested this, but I need to play around with it. Um, so if customers are bigger than zero, we want to display something and then else maybe we can display something like Let's close EJS. We can display in H2. No. No results found. Let's have a look. Refresh. Okay, no results found. Hopefully this is going to work. And now inside here, we can display some of the results. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a table. And then this table is going to have a class of table, table strip, table small, the table head is going to have, all right, we're going to have a T head, and then inside here, we're going to have table row, inside the table row, we're going to have a few THs, so TH, table, and then this is going to have a scope of column. And inside here is gonna we're gonna put first name and copy this a couple of times. So one, two, three, maybe. So we're gonna do last name. We're gonna do tell, and then we're gonna do email. Now after this, we're gonna create a T body. And inside this T body is where we're gonna do a loop. So EGS. I'm going to do for each. So inside here, we're going to do customers for each element. You can change this to whatever you like. I'm going to leave it. TD. And then for this, we're going to do EJS out. And then this is going to be element dot first name. And now I can copy this a couple of times. So element first name, last name, telephone, and email. All right. And I think that might be just okay. Let's tidy things up. Now, if we save this and if we go back to the browser and if we refresh, all right, no result. Uh, let's have a look at, let's have a look at Rebecca. I'm going to search for that and no results. All right. And I believe that, all right. And maybe it's because of this. Uh, so, if customers are not equals empty maybe or no let's try this and then let's have a look and now if i search for rebecca you will see that we're getting rebecca and we're getting all the details in here all right when we search for something like a letter we should be able to get more names for example if a name contains r then we should be able to get all the names if that makes sense so if I search for R, as you can see, we are actually getting the records, but this looks very broken. So the first thing that I noticed is when I went to the search.ejs is that I had the table class here as R table. That needs to be table. So that's just a typo, which doesn't make much of a difference. But the thing that is breaking it is that I don't have a table row inside the T body. So inside here, inside the loop, we need to create a table row like so. And this table row needs to have a class of align middle. And now we need to wrap everything in this table row. Like so, maybe we can indent this so you can see. Save. All right. Hopefully now if I go back and refresh, we are getting the records the way we should. So if we search for one that is unique, Kermit, then we get one record, which is fine. But if we search for something that contains, I don't know, so E, 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 there is a lot of names with E. Let's do E. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of names that contain the letter E. And that's pretty much the search gone. If you want to go straight to the record, 
uh, we can have a link in here. So that means where we have the TH, we can create one more. I don't know what to call this action maybe. And then we can create one more in here, TD. And then we can just do a link or an icon. I think we already had an icon in the index.ejs. So potentially you could just copy pretty much them. You can just do, you can even do the delete if you wish. So I, I can just copy the whole thing here. Copy and paste it into here, into the TD. And now if you go back and refresh, you should be able to have access to uh, view the record uh, because nothing really changes. The links are the same, the edit and so on. And if you wish to create the about page, it's fairly simple. All we need to do is, first of all, if this is linked, yeah, that's linked to the about page. All we need to do is create a new route. So maybe we create a new get route in here. We can call it about. And then inside here, we can do about. And where we have home page, let's copy the one that we, let's copy one. And I'm going to put it inside here. Change the comment so it says about. About. Uh, that's not needed. About. And then we can render the about page remove any of the queries because we won't need them and that should just work now and then if i go back and refresh we get oh i didn't create the view so in views we need to create an about page of course so about.ejs and in fact i'm just going to copy and paste some text that i've already configured so about we're getting an image from images which just demonstrates how it works. So I'm going to paste the image as well. We have an image in the public folder and we have a little bit of text and that's it. So if you go back, refresh and go to the about page. All right, we're having an error and this is because purely I didn't pass messages i think so we have only locus in here and we don't need the calibrax in fact all right save this let's go back okay now it's just working so if you click about you will see that we're getting the about page we're rendering an image and so on so that's going to be pretty much everything for this tutorial i hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you found it useful thank you very much for watching consider subscribing to my channel and i will see you in the next one I'm just trying to get some of this, we'll get out to phone you